Welcome to iLecture Online, and here's another example of how to work with capacitors and capacitance. In this case, we have a, kind of a long problem, so let's read it together. It says the uh, plates of a capacitor are 1.28 millimeters apart and have an area of 48 centimeters squared. A, what is the capacitance? B, if a dielectric with a K equals 4 is placed between the plates, what is the capacitance? If a 20 microcoulomb of charge is placed on the capacitor, what is the potential difference between the plates? And then if we remove the battery that put that charge on there, and we also move the dielectric, what is now the electric field between the plates? So let's see if we can figure this out. So first of all, they give me a capacitor, so let's draw it. And they tell me that the distance between the plates, D, is equal to 1.2. 28 millimeters and they tell me that the area of the plates a is equal to 48 centimeters squared so if they give me the distance between the plates and they give me the area we have an equation where we can, that we can use to figure out the capacity of a capacitor so here they give us the physical dimensions and that means that the capacitance is equal to epsilon sub naught times the area on the plates divided by the um, distance between the plates and epsilon sub naught is related to k as follows. We know that k is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, which means that epsilon sub naught is equal to 1 over 4 pi k, and that value happens to be 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. That would be Coulomb square per Newton, Newton meter square. All right. Knowing that, let's plug in the numbers here. The capacitance is equal to our constant, 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 Coulomb squared divided by Newton meter squared. We multiply the whole thing times the area. Now the area is given to us in square centimeters. So that's 48 centimeters squared. And we have to convert that to meters squared. Now there's 100 centimeters in a meter. Therefore, there's 10,000 square centimeters in a square meter. So convert it out to one square meter divided by 10,000 square centimeters. All right, so that converts the area. And now we have the distance between the plates. And the distance between the plates is given to us in millimeters. That's 1.28 millimeters. And we have to convert that into meters also. And one meter times, and then millimeter. Okay, so one meter is a thousand millimeters. And now we have the proper conversion there, and now we're ready to go. All right, where's my calculator? So, 8.85 exponent 12 minus. We multiply it times 48, and then we divide that by 10,000. Okay, now we have the numerator, divide that by 1.28, and divide by 1 over 1,000, that's the same as multiplying times 1,000, so times 1,000 equals, and we get, where I leave my pen, right here, we get the capacitance is equal to 3.32 <clears throat> times 10 to the minus 11, and the units of capacitance are farads, so times minus 11 farads. <clears throat> All right, so that's the answer to part A. So part A, we found the capacitance by its physical dimensions. So now it says we're going to place a dielectric in between the plates. So we place a dielectric in between the plates. The dielectric has dielectric constant K equals 4. How does that change things? What is the capacitance of this capacitor now? The difference is that we now must multiply the capacitance by K. In other words, you put a dielectric in a capacitor, it actually increases the capacitance because it weakens the electric field between the plates. <clears throat> so for, for part B, we now can say that the capacitance is equal to epsilon sub naught times K times A over D. <clears throat> I have to, excuse me, I have a frog in my throat here. All right, we'll turn off the camera for a minute. I'm going to get something to drink and I'll be right back. Okay, I got rid of my, my frog in my throat. I can now continue a little bit easier. So now you can see that the capacitance now will be the same number simply multiplied by the constant K. So this would be equal to 3.32 times 10 to the, 10 to the minus 11 farads multiplied by the, the dielectric constant, which is 4. So multiply that times 4. That means now that the capacitance now has changed to 1.33 
times 10 to the minus 10 farads. So we've increased the capacitance fourfold by placing a dielectric inside. So now, part C, where do you go? There we go. If, a 20, if 20 microcoulombs of charge, hmm, let's, uh, let's get rid of the D there, of charge is placed on the capacitor, what is the potential difference between the plates? So now what we're going to do is we're going to put a battery here to push some charge onto the, um, onto the capacitor, like so. So charges will load up onto the capacitor, and we've determined that the charge, Q, is equal to um, 20 microcoulombs. So the question is, I believe, yes, what is the potential difference across the capacitor? And of course, the potential difference, once you load up the capacitor full of charge, of course, the other side will become negatively charged. Once it's fully charged, the potential difference across the capacitor plates will equal the potential difference of the battery that pushed the charge on there. You got to remember that as long as the capacitor is not full of charge, the battery will continue to push charge onto the capacitor, and then the capacitor builds up a potential difference across the plates, which then push charge in the opposite direction. And the net effect will be that more and more charge will, char will be pushed onto the capacitor until the pushback from the capacitor equals the push of the battery. And of course, that happens when the potential difference is equal across the two. So we can then say, using this equation uh, for part C, that the, by definition, the capacitance of a capacitor is equal to the ratio of the charge that's placed on the capacitor divided by the potential or voltage that pushes the charge onto the capacitor. And since in C they want to know what the voltage is, we'll go ahead and re, uh, we change the equation to V is equal to Q over C, bringing the C down here, bringing the V over there. And in this case, the Q was 20 microcoulombs, 20 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, divided by the capacitance with the dielectric equal to 1.33 times 10 to the minus 10 farads. And so that ratio will give us the potential difference required to do so. So we're going to take that, the inverse of that and multiply that times 20 e to the 6 minus equals and wow, that's quite a bit of voltage. That would be quite a battery. Um, that would be 150,000 volts. Quite a battery. I would stay far away from a battery like that. But hey, this is just a problem to let us know how to do that. So that means that if I have that itty bitty capacitor, because actually 48 square centimeter capacitor is a relatively small capacitor, and you want to put a relatively large amount of charge on there, you need an enormous push, a battery that can give you 150,000 volts. All right, so continue on now with part D. Uh, it says if the battery is now removed in the dielectric as well. So now we're going to go ahead and remove the battery. Another way to do that is simply disconnect uh, from, the, um, from the capacitor, the battery, so no charges can flow, so that whatever charge is on there is now locked in there. And then we also remove the dielectric, take the dielectric away, and now they ask you, what's the electric field strength between the two plates now? So now it's actually a different capacitor. Once the dielectric is gone, hmm, let's take a look. So now we have a capacitor that looks like this, with no dielectric. The area is still the same. The capacitance is still the same, so the area is still equal to uh, 48 square centimeters. And the distance between uh, the two plates is still 1.28 millimeters. Like that, so that's the distance between them. So that means that the capacitance of the capacitor has now changed back to what it was before. Using this equation, we found the capacitance of the capacitor that now has its dielectric removed but it still has the charge on there that it did when we loaded it up. It couldn't go anywhere because we disconnected the wires, the charge is locked in there, so even though we take the dielectric away, the charge is still there. So the charge, Q, is still equal to 20 microcoulombs. So what is the potential difference across the plates now? It will change by having removed the dielectric, and let's find out what it is. So going back to this equation right here, we can take the capacitance, the potential difference can now be found, and we can look, uh, knowing what the Q is, so we can say that V is equal to Q divided by C. And the Q is still 20 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs, 
and the C is now going to be what? It's going to be the original capacitance, 3.32 times 10 to the minus 11 farads. So now let's see what changed here. So we take 20 e to the 6 minus divided by 3.32 e to the 11 minus equals, that's, that's of course language used for calculators, and uh, what do I have here? Hmm. My eyes aren't so good anymore, so I'm going to put on my glasses. Ah, there we go. That's much better. 602,000 volts. All right? So 602,000 volts. So by removing the dielectric, we now increase the potential difference across the plates to 602,000 volts. With actually what it really is, it's four times the amount that it held before because we removed the dielectric constant, which had a K equals to 4. All right. Now, of course, in real life, if you had a capacitor with 600,000 volts across it, you want to stay away from it. But again, this is just an example. But we haven't found the electric field yet. The electric field strength, that comes from a different chapter. And thinking back, we remember uh, that uh, the electric field is equal to the ratio of the potential difference divided by the distance. So, however much potential difference I have about the plates and how far the distance between them is. So the more potential difference over a small distance, the stronger the electric field. So let's figure that out. So this is equal to 602,000 volts divided by the distance. And the distance between them is 1.28 millimeters, which is 0 0.00128 meters. So converting from millimeters to meters, I divide by 1,000. So now I divide 602,000 by... 0.00128. Wow. So now I get uh, that would be 4.7 times 10 to the seventh. And of course, that would be volts per meter. And do I get that right? Do I have enough? Let's see, three, six. Oh, no. It's, I missed a decimal place. It's actually to the eight. So finally, we can then say that. From an early chapter, remember the definition of electric field is equal to the potential difference between the plates divided by the distance between the plates. And so you can see that the electric field at that point would be 4.7 times 10 to the 8 volts per meter. We sometimes also use newtons per coulomb. So whatever units you like to use, you get the same answer. And that's how you do a problem like this. And this is actually a really good problem to show you how we can use the equation for capacitance because of its physical uh, dimensions. You can then see how that changes when you add a dielectric between the plates. You can then also see how you can find charge and voltage by using the definition of capacitance. And then you can see how that's also related to the electric field strength between the plates by realizing that the electric field between the plates is simply the potential difference across the plates divided by the distance between the plates. And that's how you do this capacitor problem. This, I hope this helps. This is kind of a, a really neat problem that shows a lot of different uh, nuances about capacitors. All right.